me today, Kat, and welcome. Yeah, thanks, Carly, for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Really excited. Oh, good. I've just loved having you as a member in TMO since you've joined and you love performing in our open mic events, which has been so fun. Everything, everything that you do and share has just been so great. And I was just thinking, gosh, you've done so much with your life. I feel so like, wow. And she joined TMO like you. (laughs) It's just been so fun having you there. Thank you. It's fun. I love the community. Like I, it's one of those things where when I was looking before I was joining, I was like, I think this is a really fun way to like meet awesome teachers. <laughs> and that's really what it was for me. It's like, I want to meet other teachers, you know, cause I feel so, I felt so, I mean, I, I have my other community of teachers with the method that I teach, which is simply music, but still like, I feel like I need to just be more within the teacher realm and like be surrounded by people who do the same thing as me. Cause it's a new, a new thing for me. You have have explained to me or or shared with me your passion for really connecting with students, with their parents and and really like building a passion and love for music and really more specifically having amazing growth in your studio. And Mm -hmm. that didn't come, I don't think it came from some pursuit of marketing, but it really came from how you connect with your students. Can you share with us kind of your experience as whatever you want to share from that, <laughs> from going from five students to feeling like you you wanted to build and then how you went about doing that. Yeah, I think for me, uh, you know, when I first started, because I, I didn't know much about the piano teaching world aside from like, okay, now I have this method that I chose that I believe in that I like. And then, okay, so this is the what, what I'm going to teach. And then now how do I grow my studio? So in the growth aspect, I was like, well, the only thing I know how is by reaching out to friends and family and just telling them, hey, I'm going to give you guys four free lessons. So for the first three months when I started teaching, I literally just um, reach out to all my Facebook friends that I feel like I'm really connected with, right? And I just said, hey, I'm teaching piano now. Um, come come play with me I, or learn with me. I will give you four classes for free <laughs> and no pressure. And so I, I did that for three months and it was literally just at the very beginning, I would just say to them, hey, thank you so much for letting me teach you like this is something that I'm doing and it's new Um, so I'm glad that you're trusting me so I was kind of upfront with them telling them that I'm not like someone who's been doing this forever but I am new so I'm glad that you're actually coming to me and trusting me with your journey right and I said "Um, this is for you to try out and if you don't like it and you don't resonate with how I teach it's totally okay you don't have to continue and I think that um, you know parents and students really love that because they were like okay, we can just really try this. This is not some sort of like, you know, I'm going to sign up for free. And then at the end, it's going to be, I'm going to be pressured to sign up, right? So at the end of the four free lessons, I just tell them, this is what I charge and this is how it's going to work. If you guys want to continue, email me. If not, it's totally all good. I'm happy you're here, you know? And then, and then I also um, add with them that like, if you still want to learn, but you think that my method is not something that you want to uh, pursue or continue with, I said, tell me, and then I'll connect you with other piano teachers, right? That you may want to try. Um, because at the end of the day, if you want to learn, I just want you to learn regardless, whether that's with me or with someone else. And so I started with that. So in the, in the kind of like marketing side of things, um, that's kind of how I did it. And it was so like pressure free, completely pressure free. And now I'm a part of this like, um, uh, kind of like a business branding thing that tells me it's called, you know, pressure free persuasion. And I'm like, that's exactly what I did. It was like pressure free, you know? Um, so now I kind of like have a term for it, but when it comes to connection, I just really believe that like, you just have to show your kids that you love them so much. Like, I just, I just like really like in every class, you know, I ask them, like, I start my class with asking them what they're thankful for. So I always try to make conversation in the beginning. And then um, at the end of the class, I always ask the parents to like, come onto the screen and be like, Hey, this, this is their homework. This is what we did today. I just, I just make sure that they're really involved. Um, so that's kind of how it is. Like, I just make sure they're really involved. And then um, I'm always, you know, and when it's birthdays, I always make sure that they're uh, greeted happy birthday. I always text them. I message them. I always make posts about them, <laughs> tag their parents however I can, all these fun things. And um, my parents always say, like, we feel your love. That's like one, number one thing that they say. And so that's to me is like, you know, 
the most amazing thing <laughs> I could ever ask. <laughs> Yeah, would you would you um say that your growth really comes back to that in infusing that love, that curiosity in your students, that like actually interested teacher? Do you think that that has got the ball rolling and really got your students to start talking about you? I know you mentioned you're using Facebook, but what do you think uh, caused that referral system to start? <clears throat> Yeah, it's exactly that. It's like building trust with the with my existing students and their families. And then it's building the trust, but then also seeing that their kids actually really love learning because I'm, the lessons are fun. You know, they come and I mean, one time um, one of my students had a technical difficulty at the end and I was helping them out and I was I was stayed with them. I was helping them out for 20 minutes, figure out like what to do with their materials and everything. And then the dad was like, like, cat, like, I really see like like your love for these kids like he just told me he's like i see my daughter he's like every day he, she learns and she gets confident and confident every single week you're very patient with her like he just started saying these things and i was like whoa <laughs> like inside i was like i'm gonna cry i'm like okay thank you <laughs> you know but yeah that's really it like i think that when they see that you're so passionate and then you know because because i'm so passionate about them having fun I, I get really excited about creating all these like fun things. And so they get a chance to uh, engage in fun activities. And then they're like, oh, come to this piano teacher because this piano teacher not only, you know, loves, loves her students, cares for her students, and then provides all these like fun activities and challenges and all these things, you know, I mean, I, for one of the challenges that I did this past week, I mean, I, I mean, sometimes I go over and sometimes like, is this really worth it? And I'm like, yes, it is really worth it. <laughs> You know, because it's a lot of work. It is a lot of extra work that they don't see. You know, I mean, I printed the challenge sheets. I bought stickers and I put it with the challenge sheet and with the stickers. I mail it to them. Every single one had like challenge sheet and stickers. And when there's 50 of them, that's not easy to do, you know. Um, and so and then the challenge was for them to send me a video every single day, you know, and it's a lot. <laughs> so, wow. um, but it's worth okay, it. So it's so you... fun. so fun and and it it shows it's not just like money for you you know it shows like Yeah. this teacher really cares about yes it's her business because i know you and i know you're professional with everything you do Mm. but you also put your heart into it i'm curious are you online still partially online because you really had a lot of your growth during the pandemic Mm -hmm. it's all online still all online and I've uh, I've kind of said because we moved now and now I actually have a space like a studio which is nice and I've said to my students that I may want to open for um, in person and all of them are like nah online <laughs> even for the ones who live close to me you know I have some students that are literally like two miles down the road they're like mm, online <laughs> Wow. Why, so what do like you think are some of the things that they, is it, I mean, I know because I know online teaching yeah. is the best, but for, from the student's perspective, what, what do you think, why are they preferring online? Um, I think that so many things are going on. Like there's just so much like the world is moving so fast and there's so many adjustments that we have to deal with every single day. And when you're a parent and then when you have all these you know kids and it's like everybody's schedules and then having to think about like driving someone else to a place when you have the other kids don't even if you have one child like and maybe you have one child but you're also like a career woman a career parent you know that like is involved in so many other entrepreneurial things like you're just like i don't want to have the i don't want to take the time to drive my child to a piano lesson and the gas prices you know it's crazy <laughs> maybe when Yeah. the gas prices are a little bit better maybe my parents are gonna be like okay i think we're gonna go in person now you know so It's so um convenient. And when you've you've already proven the success of being, yeah you know, the learning experience online, that it actually is just as great, if not in some cases better because of the tools you have when you're online, yeah and, you know, and the, the ability to mute if you need to and, you know, all of Yeah, the, all of the things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, Oh, totally. that's so exciting. So what's the future of your studio look like? Are you, what are, what are your long-term goals? Are you happy where you're at? Are you, what are you thinking? Uh, my long-term goal right now is to, <laughs> I'm, I'm always think I always think about like moonshot ideas, like really like big and I'm um, just, you know, big audacious goal. <laughs> goals that I have. I have a like, big audacious goal for my for my studio overall because I have all these different interests. I mean, I've danced forever. 
Um, I've taught Ariel before and I don't train Ariel as much now, but I'm getting back into it. Um, my husband loves martial arts. He used to own his own like martial arts studio when he was in upstate New York before he moved to here in, in LA. And so we have this big dream of like, you know, someday this is all going to be like a big studio somehow that combines dance and Ariel and then piano and then <laughs> martial arts. I don't know. You know, just like when it comes to like just big things that I'm thinking of, like that's what I kind of like envision, right? But when it comes to specific things of like what I'm actually doing to move towards that, I am in the middle of um, creating my kind of like my webinar that's going to go out into a funnel system that will reach out to teachers that uh, will want to teach for my company um, because I really want to hire teachers that I can trust that I can build great relationships with that are going to be with me for a long time because I want teachers that are going to stay for a long term, you know, so that's really, I mean, I know, you know, uh, life happens and goals change and all these things and people grow. And of course, like maybe people won't stay with you for as long, but my, my, my goal, my, my perfect client avatar is someone that is wanting to teach for a studio um, that does not want to have to deal with the business side of things but just want to go alongside an established studio and grow with them like for really long term you know because I always think like when I was a child I was with the same piano teacher for 10 years from six years old until I graduated college uh, so I mean high school in 16 and I want teachers to be with me for that long, <laughs> you know, to see their kids uh, grow and their students grow. So my, uh, that's my specific thing that I'm doing right now is creating my webinar that's going to funnel out so that I can start hiring teachers. So that hopefully when they watch the one, the webinar, you know, it's going to weed out the people that are like, ah, that's not for me or, you know, and then, and then book a call and then let's do an interview. Let's see if it's the right fit, like all that stuff. That's so exciting. And it really does seem like it seems like the next step for you, given that you're full, given yeah. that you love what you do and you have methods that are working that your students enjoy and yeah. to bring other teachers on board. So are you thinking you will train them as well in your methods so they'd be like an employer? Or are they going to be like a contracted teacher who you send students to? Yeah, I think they're more going to be like an employee, yeah, that that I'm going to train them and it's very specific and everything, yeah. Um, well, that's I like I, I like more of the idea of that just because I really believe in the method that I teach and I, I've just seen like how effective it is and how fun it is for students. So it's like, I've, I've honestly, I've toggled back and forth, you know, with like the 1099 and, and all that stuff. And I know the other stuff has more costs to it, but like, I think at the end of the day, it gives me more of like, it's not even about control, but it's just about effectivity. Like I like the effectiveness of it. Right. And and I like I like it when it's streamlined. <laughs> you know, I, I like things streamlined if that makes sense. So like when there's like if there's multiple methods, my mind is just gonna be like, what? You know, and then <laughs> every parent has a different issue because maybe this one wasn't as effective and then this one was great. Like it was it it would just like make my yeah. mind go crazy. <laughs> it makes sense. It, it, yeah. Hearing your personality of what you like to do and how you like to teach that really truly makes sense. I, I'd love to hear, I, there's so many questions I have, but, um, you know, we have teachers inside our community and outside who listen, who they're just, they just feel so stuck. They feel, mm. um, they feel like they're passionate about teaching. They feel like they're set up. They have the methods. They might have mm -hmm. like five to 10 students and they just don't know where to go. Maybe they don't have a big community to reach out to and give free lessons to, mm -hmm. you know, or maybe they've tried that and it just didn't go anywhere. Do you have any like mindset thoughts for them for how to get them out of this kind of rut of feeling kind of down? And, and some of them even have reached out to me and feel like um, they might need to start teaching at a school, even though they mm -hmm. don't want to, They but they'd mm -hmm. way rather teach private, you know, online lessons. Mm -hmm. I think that anytime that there, like there's like a bottleneck, there's like a stuckness, right? Like a wall or whatever that is. I think personally for me, because I've felt that many times, you know, with like ever changing, like, do I really want to dance my entire life? Like, dan I mean, as a dancer, which is what I've done for my, my entire life, it's, 
it's hard it's like i'm constantly auditioning i'm constantly putting myself out there and it's like hi this is me hope you like me <laughs> you know it's constant you know and then um going into stunts was the same going into acting it's the same and i'm realizing that wherever you go whatever industry you do like same thing being a piano teacher it's like hi this is me i teach piano hope you like me you know everywhere you go it's literally the same nothing changes whether you are an entrepreneur or you go into a workplace right you're you whether you're new or you've been at the same workplace for a while same company you've been working there for a while you still have to establish relationships you still have to establish the likability you still have to establish like connectivity and all that stuff and i think what it really boils down to is yourself like it's it's you so when there's a bottleneck um i think it's time to get quiet and just be like okay what are the belief systems that i have about myself that is because honestly the way people see us is what we project, what we project out there, right? So I, I feel, I, I, at least I, I think that's what it is. So if I, if I feel like, and I, I talked to you about this earlier, you know, when I was like, I just never thought that I'm like a good enough pianist, you know, and I've had to work on that. I've had to literally like, and even to, to now, like I keep telling myself, no cat, like, it's not about being good enough. You're just good. That's it. It's not about in the word enough. It's like, you're good, period. You're great, period, <laughs> you know, and, and it's not good enough, but I'm enough, period, <laughs> you know, it's so I think it's a lot of um, uh, I love I love reading a lot of books. I'm reading. I'm currently reading Gabby Bernstein's uh, The Universe Has Your Back. I love uh, I'm currently reading also like Joe Dispenza. I'm not sure if pe people are familiar with Dr. Joe Dispenza. It's a crazy story about him going into an accident and he was supposed to have this crazy surgery in his back but he opted not to get that surgery but then he healed himself literally from mindset like it's crazy it's just this miraculous thing but there's this thing about like elasticity in our brain and neuroplasticity that that happens where it's like a lot of the things in our brain it's literally just like automatic thoughts right it's literally automatic thoughts that we've done over and over again and if we're stuck in that thinking that's what we project out there in the world right and so I think my number one, um, um, uh, what do you call that, advice is uh, to, to get quiet and to understand, like, you know, whether you believe in God, like I do. So I, I always like pray, I'm like, God, like, help me with this mindset that I have. Like, how do you see me? Um, Ariana Grande has this song that when she when she sang it, I was like, does she know that she's singing that does she know that she's even singing about God right now? <laughs> Just this song called Um I, I Want to Love Me from I Hope it's something like I Hope love me from your perspective love me for, it's i can't i have j completely butchered the lyrics but look it up she's talking about i, I hope <laughs> that's it still uh, uh see me from i wish i could see me from from how you see me something like that right and so when i think about myself and how i fail or i'm not good enough or i feel like i should be here but i'm still here i just sit down like uh, how do you see me how do you see me right now? Because if you see me and I'm like great and I'm at the right moment where I'm supposed to be, then that's how I should see me. And when I lead with that, everything else like literally lines up, <laughs> you know? So I think that's, that would be my advice. I know maybe that's not as practical. Oh, no, that is so, uh, so right on, I think. And I, you know, I kind of observe, I love observing mindset and teachers and different perspectives and you know I see so many teachers in different situations with either they're moving or their husband is sick and they're the breadwinner now and they've got to mm -hmm. provide and it stresses them out or it makes them feel <clears throat> overwhelmed um and then you have teachers who are just getting into this anyway there's a there's a, a whole number of circumstances that weigh on me because mm -hmm. I, I work with these teachers and I have very similar thoughts as to, well, what do you think of yourself? Like, mm -hmm. what you think of yourself is actually what what you're going to exactly what you said, portray, put out there. And if you're thinking those negative thoughts, that's what other people may think about you because you're putting that out there yeah. versus like how you are, you just nailed it with, you know, who am I? I'm, I am enough, I am good. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that's the end like period mm -hmm. and when we we can shift I don't know it's amazing there's so much work that can be done there with mindset and shifting our yeah. thoughts 
and recognizing that a circumstance does not dictate who we are, but it, it really is what we believe. Like we can choose to believe anything we want about ourselves. Like, it, doesn't, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter what anybody has told you ever about yourself. Yeah. We, can, we can actually choose to think whatever we want. Yeah. And in turn, it, it brings different action and different, it can totally change your circumstance in the future. So thank you so much. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I don't know if you had anything to add to that. I actually, because you just brought up a uh, thing there about like, you know, maybe teachers are like, maybe their husband, you know, got or a spouse got sick and now they're like the main breadwinner. I'm actually in that like boat right now because my husband just got laid off. Well, he's not sick, but got laid off. Right. So there's things that are happening personally, too. So and this is the funniest thing, because I do believe that our words have power. And literally th the day before he got laid off, I was with a friend and I told my friend, I just think that Lee and Lee's my husband's name. Lee should be in a different job. He's been doing that job for the same. He could basically do it while he's sleeping. He's so good at it. And then, but but I just feel like the company he works for doesn't really tap on his like giftings and his talents. And I think that he could be, um, he could use more of his giftings and talents. You know. And I just said, I feel like he's just he needs to embark on something new and literally the next day we got word that he got laid off because his company is closing and when my husband said that he was like i was like oh great it's about time <laughs> you know and i think you know that kind of confidence comes with the daily practice of like believing that everything's gonna be okay and like have like having that deep faith that like everything's gonna be okay no matter what and so he had like a one month severance pay and that one month is basically done at end of the may and end of may and then of course june july i'm taking a break off in august because my teaching schedule i take a full month off and so i'm like okay so basically by august i won't get paid and then if you still don't have a job by then you know i mean i mean of course i'm believing he'll have a job by then but just in case you know so i'm always you know planning ahead and so i've been like you know praying about it and then literally and this is again comes with like mindset and like believing because literally yesterday i got an email from a commercial that i did last year and then an email i got an email from a production from their production saying hey we want to renew your spot for this commercial that you did so when we renew your spot you get another buyout fee for it so they're paying me a buyout fee plus 10 percent because they always add an extra when they renew your spot and that basically covers the month of june which is crazy to me and i was like <laughs> i was just like see see you don't gotta worry you don't gotta worry <laughs> You know, oh, it's just confirmation that. of things like that, you know? You know, and you're such a great example. I'm also such a, a, a believer in, in God and um, in my faith practices. I believe that prayer helps us see the miracles and mm -hmm. helps open our eyes to them. Because there could be somebody who those exact same things happen to who didn't see that as anything unordinary, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. that thing that happened to you was a gift and was a blessing and because you are so mindful and aware and prayerful you saw it as that yeah and because of that you now see other opportunities but i it's just so interesting because i see people who also have these miracles happening in their lives but because they maybe aren't as faithful they're more on the other side of like ah oh, it doesn't really matter mm -hmm. they don't see those things and in turn they they don't i don't know like it, i think that it it adds those things can add on those mm -hmm. miracles in your life because you're aware of them yeah and you then make different choices because of them yeah totally yeah well i'm sorry about your husband's job but <laughs> it's okay <laughs> like you said maybe i mean it's all in the the plan <laughs> yeah he's got an interview today a first one interview so i'm excited okay. about it yeah <laughs> we shall see <laughs> either way it's gonna be it's gonna be all good <laughs> Well, this has been just such a fun discussion. Do you want to touch on your finance history at all, like financial freedom? Um, it's it's up to you, whatever you want. I mean, I don't know how much time you have. I'm I, mean, I love conversations, so we could go, for, so we could go for like ten more minutes. And I sure. think your story <laughs> is one that is. I have a, a similar story, which I've told you or you know of, but mm -hmm. yeah. um, a lot of teachers, I think. I, I don't know. I think it's very encouraging and inspiring to hear. Um, yeah. So tell me about your, I guess, your journey to financial freedom mm -hmm. and how 
I don't know. The I, I've also had the the extremes on both ends of being around a hundred thousand in debt. For me, it was student debt, and the the crippling nature of that. Yeah. Um, until we had a plan, and then it was like when there's the plan in place. For me, it was wow, like there's actually light at the end of the tunnel versus feeling yeah. like your whole life you're just going to be strapped down. So tell us a little bit about, you mentioned when you got married, you were in debt mm -hmm. and consumer student debt and consumer debt. And tell me about kind of where you were at in your mindset then and how you climbed out of it. Yeah. So for me, uh, when I was, you know, I was born and raised in the Philippines and over there, my parents always taught me to save. They were always like savers, but also they always taught me that like, um, if you don't have it, you can't, you can't buy it. If you don't have the cash for it, you can't buy it. So I didn't really grow up in credit cards. That's just how it, it was for me back then. And then I moved to the U.S. And it's like, there's this piece of plastic that you could just swipe and you could just grab everything. And then, you know, and coming from, you know, the home in the Philippines, the third world country to coming to the U.S. was a shock in so many different levels. And one of them was like the fact that I could have nice things without having to pay for it. <laughs> well, you have to pay for it still, but you know what I mean? Um, and then my husband also had a lot of student debt and uh, consumer debt. And he moved from New York to L.A. Um, in a car and crashed in his aunt's house for like months until he found a job. You know, everything was on credit card and all the stuff. So when we got married, it was like a struggle. Um, I, was, I was sharing with you in, in our um, messages that <laughs> we actually, when we got married, we slept in our parents' bedroom next to their bed on a mattress down uh, on the floor and my mom being the traditional filipino that she is she will not take off the plastic off of things because she wants to preserve everything so that mattress by the way was wrapped in plastic so every time we moved it was <laughs> oh my gosh we got married oh that's amazing and we're like six months into our marriage, you know, that's hilarious. Um, and then we're like, okay, we need to get out of here. So we moved. So we finally moved and we found a place uh, across the street from our parents' house, which was, again, perfect timing at that time. So this is a side story, but my mom had cancer and we were right across the street from her. So I was able to take care of her a lot during that time, which was amazing. Um, she's fine now, thank God. But um that area is really bad like it's they still live there actually and it's like just not the best area there's like always like cops there there's gangs there's people selling drugs and our our apartment our studio apartment was filled with roaches there was mice it was just everything right and we lived there for a year because we were saving because at that point we were like well um, we can't find, we can't afford a really nice place in a nice area. And th the reality is this is what we could afford so that we could still have some extra to save and put away, right? We got introduced to Dave Ramsey and that's really what s helped us. Like literally we were like, we are going to follow this to the T and make this work for us. So that's what we did. And we, uh, um, we paid off all of our debt. We're debt free. We started investing. So we've, we've ha we have investment properties and all that. But for me, what that ties to is, you know, finances is such a burden, right? When you are just strapped and you feel like you can't move and you can't uh, do fun things, it really affects your mentality. It affects your emotions. It affects your creativity. And I think that the reason why I have so much energy for creativity for my studio is the fact that we don't have to worry about debt, you know? I mean, of course, we have mortgage and all that stuff, which is debt, but we don't have the consumer debt like looming uh, above us, right? So that to me is so important so that you can be, you can be free to to um, operate in whatever it is that you're operating in, whether that's just at your workplace or you're an entrepreneur or a teacher, whatever that is, you have more room for creativity because uh, you're not worried. Oh, yeah. that's so good. And I can imagine that you guys during that, you know, you kind of said, and we paid off our debt. That was a lot of debt. And I'm sure it didn't happen in a year. It happened over no. years of working on yeah. it. But the everything that you learned during that time, like how to communicate with your husband, how to be creative, how to work hard, how to budget. I mean, there are so many principles of like just having a good marriage and, mm. and just life principles that now you can pass on to other people. Yeah. Gosh, part of me going through that was in a way grateful that I got to go through yeah. that so young, you know, in my 20s, yeah. early, tw well, late 20s. And because now I'm, I'm, I won't go ever back to that because I know yeah. what it's like. I mean, it's amazing that if you strap down and really like can climb out of debt, it, 
you if you're in the debt right now you feel like oh it's going to be the worst five years but actually like you learn so much yeah you learn so much and also like being able to do that it gives you this almost like superpower like well if i can do that i can do anything else <laughs> it so gives true. you this feeling of like this is cool <laughs> So, so true. And you yeah. are evidence of that and everything that you've created. And for anyone listening that's like going through that right now, I, I personally also believe that the creation that you can come up with when, when faced with a task or this mountain mm -hmm. um, often can be some of your best because yeah. you have this mountain that you have to climb over you are forced into this position of like okay like what are my skills what what can i do like what where where are my extra hours like what can i sacrifice can i sacrifice the netflix and the mm -hmm. trips and the cruises and the new cars and like it, you're forced into like a really adult way of thinking um yeah that in turn is i don't know i i think it's worth it's worth it all <laughs> Yeah. And you know, when we first got married, um, because I came from the Philippines, I didn't really have my papers situated yet. So I couldn't really work yet, too. So I was actually doing a bunch of like odd jobs. Like I was cleaning houses. I cleaned so many houses like here in the Sunset and Beverly Hills area. I pet sat. I, you know, there were so many things. I mean, I have so like hilarious stories of like cleaning houses because I used some products that were wrong one time. It was hilarious. <laughs> my mom came to the rescue. <laughs> Um, I, I pet sat for this dog that had like a pacemaker and had to walk them and it's up in the hills of like Beverly Hills and one time the dog walked and just went boom and just completely faded and I'm like no no not on my watch not on my watch <laughs> just so many hilarious stories oh of these gosh. work you know and then I don't know just so many different things walking at the mall approaching kids for this talent scout I was I was doing every job I could get <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's so, so great. Well, thank you so much, Kat, for sharing your expertise, your passion for teaching and for music, and just for, in general for being a person who creates. You know, mm. I, I think you are like such a prime example of there's no limit to what we can be interested in, what we can learn. Before our call, you mentioned you were doing stunt training, you know, and you're nearing 40. And that's like, you know, something that most people would tell you, don't even, tr you know, don't even go for that. Like you, you yeah. don't fall into the right, that the right category or whatever it is. And I, I just think you're incredible. I think you're inspiring and you've just created this life that I know I'm positive <laughs> inspires so many people around you that's why you have people flocking to you <laughs> oh thank you thank you I appreciate it <laughs> thank you yeah thanks Carly